Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Bitcoin right now trading at $43,400. We are seeing uh, a little bit of resistance up here near the $44,000 mark. This is Bitcoin on the daily. Um, over the last couple of days, we have not seen much in the way of a downturn. And the two days prior to that, we saw nothing but an upswing. So now we're seeing the bullish momentum return to Bitcoin. We are seeing what is looking like a double bottom pattern here, reaccumulation for Bitcoin. This is also looking positive for the rest of the cryptocurrency space. XRP trading right now at about 76.6. So this bullish pennant pattern still holding, we are likely going to see a move to the upside if we do see more positive momentum on Bitcoin. Ki Young Ju here on Twitter says Bitcoin accumulation phase has begun. So he's also noticing this. Newbies who joined last year are evolving to long-term hodlers. Let's not forget, guys, it really doesn't take a long time to be considered a long-term hodler in this space. And I know some of you guys have been with me since 2018. Um, however, more people have joined cryptocurrency, and now the people that got into cryptocurrency in 2020 and uh, mid-2021, well, they are now going to be considered the old school holders. And so to Ki Young Ju's point here, the market cap for six plus months, old Bitcoin takes 52% now. It was 13% at the cyclic top, unlikely to hit the previous low as the newbies will wait for other newbies in the cycle. So what happens is more newbies tend to get in, and then those who were once previously called newbies are no longer newbies. And those people are in a better position now because new money's flowing in, which will push the price even higher. And so this is the model he's looking at. Realized cap UTXO age bands, just showing the Bitcoin trend over time and how we saw accumulation happen over those downturns. And so we're seeing it now right over here, distribution model. We saw sell-offs occur while Bitcoin was at its high. Uh, but now we are seeing more accumulation, or at least that is what this is implying. So an interesting model to look at there. Also tech dev here mentioning this working Bitcoin thesis timing of the 2021 red rhymes with the 2012 red. And so uh, I'll look at the chart in a second levels of 2021 red rhyme with the 2013 red. Therefore expect shorter extensions of the next impulse relative to 2013. Might be all coincidence, who knows? Use whatever gives you an edge on your time horizon. And so just demonstrating this uh, 2010, 2011 to 2013, the chart, the trend that we saw back then, and now the 2016 chart to now. So these are periods in the Bitcoin timeframe that are a little extended. And uh, so he, he shows here the halving moment as well. What happened after the halving? The reaccumulation phases happening at the 1.272 and the 1.172 levels, which is what we are seeing now on today's time frame. And so the log curve is suggesting that we are just going to go higher, estimating a six figure Bitcoin over the next year or so. Also look at the RSI down here, guys, from the uh, from the previous trend from about a decade ago to now. You can see the similarities in those movements up as well. TechDev denotes that with some uh, colored boxes here, just uh, demonstrating the similarities in pattern. So something else we should be paying attention to with regards to Bitcoin price. And uh, you know, this pattern here, I got XRP up here. So let me just throw up Bitcoin for a sec. This pattern here is looking very promising. We did push up past that support level, now heading up against resistance. Next level to me looks like it should be about $51,000, $52,000 per BTC. Of course, throwing this Fibonacci on here, we are now above the 0.236 level. So the 0.5 would be uh, $51,000 but we do need to get up above that 52, 51, 52,000. Uh, and then, you know, some are eyeing the 0 0.702 and uh, of course anything could still happen at that point. So we got to keep a close eye on it. Uh, I also saw this, I wanted to bring this to you guys, didn't want to dwell on it too much, but I thought it was interesting. This is breaking a majority of consensus shareholders now demand an audit under Swiss law to investigate serious irregularities. Group alleges that MetaMask and Infura were secretly given away to a JP Morgan backed entity via illegal transaction called Project North Star. So just more to incriminate consensus and the Ethereum Foundation. Uh, on March 1st, a group of 35 former employees representing more than 50% of all known consensus shareholders filed this request for a special audit pursuant to this Swiss code. Uh, the special audit is to investigate serious 
irregularities. So uh, the details are down here in this article. I'm not going to get into them. I think this is a good starting point though to where I do want to go because we are getting a better picture of where the Ripple XRP case is going and someone in the XRP community noticed something very interesting about another case uh, that has been filed against Ripple that he wanted to bring to our attention that could actually give us a hint to when we will actually see a settlement. So first off, let me talk to you guys about this. Ian Northing posted this, Ripple seeks to collaborate with Congress on smart cryptocurrency regulation. So Ripple's head of public policy, Susan Friedman, stated that many entities in the crypto space, including Ripple, seek to work proactively with Congress and regulators on smart regulation for a digital asset space that both fosters innovation and protects consumers. And so uh, she tweeted this out just the other day. Many folks within crypto, Ripple included, are looking to work proactively with Congress and regulators on smart regulation for the digital asset space that both foster innovation and protects consumers. This is not the Wild West. And so she's referring to Gary Gensler's comment uh, that he made, I believe it was a few months ago. The Ripple exec says that while noting that the cryptocurrency sector isn't the Wild West, as it is often claimed to be in late September of 2021, SEC Gary Gensler, while arguing for greater oversight in crypto, called the sector the Wild West when he testified before the U.S. Senate. So it's a bit of a misnomer. I mean, we have seen more cryptocurrency regulatory clarity come into the United States and there is regulation in place. I mean, you do have to claim all crypto gains. And so it is very passe, very 2017, I think, at this point to call cryptocurrency the Wild West. I mean, it's it's way less Wild West than it was then. Then I think we were kind of at the uh, the beginning of the end of cryptocurrency really being the Wild West. New companies were getting a lot of exposure and uh, backed, I believe, came online in 2018. That was kind of the beginning of uh, institutional grade cryptocurrency trading, just to give you guys an example. So calling it the Wild West, maybe a bit of an outdated label for cryptocurrency. Um, but, you know, she's saying Ripple obviously still looking to help proactively with Congress and regulators on smart regulation. We did also recently hear from Jeremy Hogan that April or May of 2022 will be the time frame. This is his prediction. Bags full SEC lawsuit against Ripple could end in settlement by April 2022. Judge Nepper knows exactly what's in the emails and seen all relevant case docs in camera, including emails related to Hinman's 2018 speech and Esther Brooks's notes. According to recent documents shared by Jeremy Hogan, there will be a one hour settlement talk between the SEC and Ripple 14 days after the close of fact discovery. Uh, should both parties reach an agreement, there is a possibility that the case could end in a settlement in April or May of this year. So I know a lot of you guys already know about this and I know a lot of you guys are probably getting very excited about this. However, how do we know this for sure? I'm gonna get to that in a second. So far, Judge Sarah Netburn has seen all relevant case documents in camera, including emails relating to Hinman's 2018 speech. Uh, here's a quote. She knows exactly what's in the emails, etc. If I am correct that the SEC is the problem child here, that could make a big difference. It's coming from Jeremy Hogan. Uh, a good mediator can really work miracles sometimes. And so Jeremy Hogan predicting that this settlement could end in Ripple's favor. Although the previous settlement held months ago between both parties did not yield positive results, the next one slated to be held 14 days after the close of fact discovery is expected to end in favor of Ripple given the amount of evidence against the agency. So over the last several months, well over the last year really, we have seen mounting evidence against the SEC. We've even brought in as the XRP community an Ethereum scandal that uh, could very well implicate the SEC in favoring the Ethereum Foundation uh, when they are supposed to be a unbiased impartial regulatory agency. Here's another quote from Jeremy Hogan, yes, a one hour settlement discussion happened a couple of months ago. It didn't settle, which means that the next most likely settlement time would be at mediation. See arrow below, which will be hosted by the one and only Judge Netburn who has seen all of the documents in camera the XRP community friendly attorney said. And so here is his tweet. Uh, just gonna bring you guys up the tweet here. Yes, a one hour settlement discussion happened a couple of months ago. Uh, it didn't settle, which means that the most likely settlement would be at the mediation. And so here is where uh, he points to it, a settlement right down here. Counsel for the parties proposed the following alternative dispute resolution mechanism for this case a settlement conference before a magistrate judge or the magistrate judge, and then uh, they're supposed to fill in the blanks here for that person's name. So here, right here, 
Uh, he's denoting that we should be seeing this 14 days following the close of fact and discovery. So that puts his prediction into April of 2022, uh, maybe going into May of 2022. Since Judge Netburn has seen all the Ethereum and XRP documents, then could she highly recommend the SEC to settle with Ripple? That was asked by uh, XRP Crypto Wolf. That's why I mentioned it, responds Jeremy Hogan. She knows exactly what all the emails are, etc. And if I am correct in that the SEC is the problem child here, that could make a big difference. A good mediator can really work miracles sometimes, as uh, quoted in that last article. So interesting because, you know, we have been waiting for this a very long time. We have been trying to pinpoint, uh, you know, that kind of exact moment when we could see a resolution occur. And, you know, th there are a lot of factors that have always been up in the air over the last several months. And it was almost like a moving target, right? You know, with the extensions, we didn't really know. And so, you know, Jeremy Hogan and John Deaton and uh, James K. Filan, just to name three in the XRP community, three lawyers that have been helping us navigate through this, they've been very good about keeping us apprised of where we kind of stand as XRP hodlers, what we should be uh, looking for next. Michael XRP tag uh, down here saying, so they don't have to have a meeting uh, and discuss settlement within 14 days of expert discovery closing. When is mediation? And Jeremy Hogan just uh, clarifying here, they met within 14 days after end of fact discovery. Generally, that's the first required meeting because it's the expert discovery that really starts to cost them money. We don't know when mediation is set yet. Uh, down here, we file a notice of mediation, but I don't know what happens in New York. So we know Jeremy Hogan is located in Florida and uh, New York is a different jurisdiction. So uh, there could be different rules there for the legal system. Hassan Alazani, though. Bringing this up, we said months ago that there is an initial settlement being discussed between the SEC and Ripple. Now many confirm what we said, including Jeremy Hogan. And so uh, he was just retweeting this out. Back from November of 2021, a real approach to cryptocurrency regulation. And at this time, you know, we had a different set of expectations. Uh, timelines since then did get pushed. And eventually, you know, to the disappointment of XRP holders, we had to wait longer and longer. Uh, you know, in anticipation of a positive final verdict. But then I saw this guy's hot off the press from just this morning. This brought to us by Stefan Hubert here on Twitter. What do you guys think about this? Now, he's thinking out of the box here. Is it already clear internally when the Ripple litigation will be settled? Because Ripple has now agreed to start preparing for the trial based on the precedent of the SEC case in November. So this is another court order. In it, Ripple Labs litigation order re-stipulation to modify case schedule. The parties in the above caption action have filed a joint stipulation to modify the case schedule. Uh, and then it gives some details on that. The stipulation explains that SEC v Ripple, a concurrent litigation in the Southern District of New York involves many of the same factual and legal questions at issue in this case and that there would be efficiencies in allowing the SDNY case to precede this case. So they're talking about a separate case here. However, there are certain stipulations as they mention in this, uh, in this next case that could be very important when clarified in the upcoming case. And so to me and to Stefan Hubert, it sounds as though this is what they're suggesting here. Hammer out all the details with the SEC and Ripple case because once we get a verdict on some of those details, those details will be utilized in this case, which will start November 18th, 2022. So yeah, it does open up a fairly big window, but uh, you know, it doesn't sound like they're going to be waiting much longer. Stefan Hubert also uh, bringing this up, you know, with regard to the case of Ripple versus Zakhanov, the schedule has now been agreed. Trial is set for March, 2024. So this case started back in 2018, but they're pushing this one back to 2024. Remember, they've been dealing with this case since the beginning of 2018, scheduling trial two years into the future. I can only interpret that this case will be resolved without a trial. So that is just another point of interest. Back to the November 2022 point though, they certainly do want to utilize some of the Ripple SEC uh, case law, I suppose. Apply it to whatever's happening beginning in November of 2022. So April, May 2022 for a settlement on track. And it certainly does sound like we are going to get something in 2022. This is going to be the year for XRP appreciation and eventually 
a cash out for XRP holders. I don't doubt that this is going to also coincide with another bull run that uh, we're going to see for Bitcoin. Altcoins will eventually rally alongside Bitcoin. Again, just per TechDev's point here, we are seeing a reaccumulation similar to what we saw in 2013 before that next pop off top. So if you are of the opinion that Bitcoin is going to retrace to the 702 and then collapse, you may want to rethink your strategy uh, especially if we do not see altcoins rally at that moment. We're only into month three of 2022, and I expect more positive movement for cryptocurrency on the horizon. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.